Video games. Yeah. It's the new coat rack I, that my mom bought for me. Yeah. Look at it. Ah, there's probably nothing important there. Blah, 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 blah. Citra does not agree with my computer sometimes. Blah, 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 blah. I'm starting here because the amount of cutscenes at the start of the game, even if uh, they are better in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon than Sun and Moon, oof, it's still bad. To what extent of randomization are we talking? Let me pull it up here as I walk through the doors again. Pokemon traits. The statistics are unchanged uh, from what they tend to be, but they are updated to uh, Generation 8 standards. So any Pokemon that had updated stats back then, or uh, back in Gen 7, will have updated stats to match their Gen 8 versions. Uh, types are unchanged. Abilities are randomized. Uh, no Wonder Guard is allowed. The, uh, the abilities do not stay the same between evolutions. Like, they do not follow evolutions, and they do not follow mega evolutions. However, trapping abilities, negative abilities, and bad abilities are all banned. What do those mean? Uh, negative abilities include defeatist, slow start, truant, forecast, zen mode, klutz, stall, multi-type, stance change, shields down, schooling, battle bond, power construct, RKS system, disguise. Bad abilities include minus plus anticipation, forewarn, frisk, honey gather, friend guard, healer, telepathy, symbiosis, aura break, battery receiver, and power of alchemy. Evolutions are randomized. The only thing that I have, the only things I have ticked are allow alternate forms, change impossible evolutions, so trade Pokemon can evolve via level, make evolutions easier, so some Pokemon like uh, Zwilus and Hydreigon would evolve earlier. Um, Time-based evolutions are also not a thing. Starters are randomized, but they are completely randomized. I have not done uh, what I tend to do and uh, end up, you know, selecting one of them be Kecleon. Just, you know, make things a little bit interesting. That's Rowlet, for sure, 100%. That is Rowlet. And that is Fire-type Litten. That is for sure what that is. And that is the Poplio. There he is. And then I get to pick who I want. So our starters this time are Hoot Hoot, Magmar, and Tangela. So evolutions are randomized, which means uh, Hoot Hoot will probably evolve quicker than any of these other two. Uh, but Magmar is pretty strong. Not a huge fan of, uh, of Hoot Hoot stats. And Tangela, well, he's just kind of there. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Hoot Hoot because it's the, it, it fits. He's an owl. Look, it's the normal type Pokemon Hoot Hoot. That's him. Look at him. There he is. We picked. Wait. 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 Wait! I chose Rowlet! I sure done did! And now for finding where the heck he is. Hang on. Do I not have Pokemon previews for Gen 7 Pokemon? Huh. I guess I don't. Do I have icons for Gen 7 Pokemon? I do. Okay. Uh, in that case, let's do this. He's gonna be a teensy boy. And uh, also, a little bit... Yeah, he's gonna be a little bit pixelated, but there, there he is, it's Rowlet, totally. That's 100% Rowlet. Would you like to give Hoot Hoot a nickname? But I chose Rowlet! Man, this game sucks. Boom. Hoot Hoot. Name it Hootlet, you got it. Ha! 
Hopelet. So you went with Rowlet, I sure did. Island Kahuna? Alright, so in addition to all the things I've said thus far as to what's randomized, static Pokemon are completely random, so uh, some wild legendaries that you'd be walking into and in interacting with might not be legendary. And likewise, anything else that you'd walk up to and talk to could be legendary. In-game trades are randomized both requested and given. I don't know if it'll actually specify what, uh, what will be asked for, but hey. Whoa, Citra, calm down. What's up, Mudkip? An actual starter Pokemon? Moves and movesets uh, are completely random. Uh, you have two guaranteed level one moves on every Pokemon. But uh, I believe I have also said it. No, I, it does not look that way. I thought I would have everybody start off with, uh, with four moves. Uh, but no game-breaking moves. Like, that's selected, so you're gonna have to... Don't need to worry about, like, Dragon Rage showing up really early. Also, Mudkip has roots. You heard it here first. Uh... Other than that, move data is basically the same in uh, in general. Like, the moves are not updated to be Gen 8 standards either. Um, I just haven't futzed with the moves at all. I found a Toxic Orb! Do I have Guts? Can I learn Facade? What is my ability? Synchronize? Not terrible. Uh, I've got plus special defense, minus defense, which, eh. Not terrible. Mudkip is firmly planted in people's memory. That's why he knows Ingrain. Faux Pokemon. Trainers have completely random Pokemon. Rival will also carry their starter through the game. R uh, trainer names will be randomized, as we'll see later. And trainer class names will also be randomized. Uh, I have it unselected to have them uh, try to use Pokemon with similar strength, so it's possible we'll be seeing a lot of legendaries. Um, there's no early Wonder Guard, so there is potential for Wonder Guard to show up later. And, uh, alternate forms may show up, so we might have, uh, Alolan versions of Pokémon. We might have Cantonian versions, so... Uh, there will also be one additional Pokémon for boss trainers. Uh, I don't know what the game considers boss trainers, uh, but we'll see eventually, I'm sure. Also, Pidoof with extreme speed. Let's go. Totem Pokemon will be randomized, but they will have similar strength to what the originals will, would have been. Ally Pokemon will also be randomized with similar strength to what the the ally would have at the time. Hi, Hal. Auras are unchanged, though, so um, this, the power-ups that the auras give for the Totem Pokemon will stay the same. Held items will be randomized for those Totem Pokemon, and alternate forms will also be uh, allowed. And wild Pokemon, as we've seen, they are random. They, But we have an additional rule of catch em all mode. So we will see all the Pokemon available to us uh, in, uh, in the Pokedex, I'm pretty sure. I have that mostly selected just in case I want to copy the settings over to a Gen 4 randomizer. It'd be, uh, it'd make post-game a lot less of a hassle. Uh, Wild Pokemon will also have randomized hell I held items, but, uh, bad items will be banned. And alternate forms also have a potential of showing up. Time-based encounters are not being used. Legendaries, uh, are also not being, like, it's not selected to not use legendaries, so legendaries will show up. It's Juggler Marcellus! And his Tangela! Of course he would pick the starter that's weak to mine. That's how for ya. I'm sorry, it's Marcellus for ya. What's up, Tri Attack or Weather Ball, I guess? Yeah, it's Weather Ball. And I don't know, do we have this? Yeah, another Weather Ball. Unless it crits, I think we're fine. Teams and HMs. They are completely randomized. Uh. I do not have the option selected to keep field move TMs or force percentage of good damaging moves, so it's possible we might have a lot of TMs that don't do any damage. 
Team NHM compatibility is randomized, but it's preferring the same type. So if I was to teach Hoot Hoot a flying move, about there's about a 90% chance that it could learn it. And uh, TMs will also follow evolutions. Now, whether or not that means if Hoot Hoot uh, would learn some TMs, that would mean Noctowl would learn the same TMs. Or if it means whatever Hoot Hoot will evolve into, because it is a randomized evolution, whatever Hoot Hoot will evolve into maybe can learn the same TMs as Hoot Hoot. I don't know that yet. Move Tutors are randomized. I don't think... It's a Froki. I don't think Move Tutors would actually be in Ultra Sun until post-game? I think? It's been a while since I played Ultra Sun, so I don't remember. Uh, Move Tutor compatibility, though, is randomized, although, like the teams and HMs, uh, they would prefer the same type and then can follow evolutions. And then with the items... Uh, field items are random, and bad items are banned. Special shops will also have random items. So if we were to go looking for, like, quick, ba quick balls and net balls and all that at the special uh, places, then uh, they'll have a different selection of items and potentially, like, have Sacred Ash for 100 p poke dollars, like in that other game I played where that happened. Bad, bad items are banned there. Banned regular shop items is also checked. However, there are a couple other options here. Ban overpowered shop items, which I don't have that checked, which means we might have some overpowered uh, shop items. Balanced shop item prices, uh, that is also unchecked, so maybe we'll have some wild costs for the shops. Guarantee evolution items, that is also unchecked, so there will be no evolution items to be purchased uh, at the usual spots. And guarantee X items, that is also unchecked. And then lastly, miscellaneous tweaks. We have fastest text. Uh, ban Lucky Egg is unchecked, so Lucky Egg has a potential of showing up. All wild Pokemon can call allies, so SOSs might occur a lot. And don't re don't revert temporary alt forms. Let me just hover over that to see what that means. It says it lets all party Pokemon that are in an alternate form retain their alternate form when the game is reset. Without this setting... Mega Evolutions, Primal Reversions, Ash Greninja, Zygarde Complete Form, and Ultra Necrozma will revert to their base form upon reset. In Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, and Gen 7, the setting also prevents certain alternate forms from being reverted after a battle if these forms are not the result of an in-battle transformation. This includes Primal Groudon, Primal Kyogre, Wishy-Washy School Form, and Minior. And that's pretty much all the... The tweaks that I've made with this randomizer, it's pretty similar to uh, the YouTube ones I've done with Majirai. Uh, just with a little bit of extra craziness. Think like the middle of the road between the YouTube stuff with Majirai and the Platinum randomizer I just did. Move tutors are on beaches. That's right, I forgot that they were part of the Mantine surfing thing. Hi Lily, how you doing? Okay, sorry. She scared me. And I scared her. Look at my face! How could I not be scary? Who are you? Save Nebby. He can fly. <laughs> He's not happy about it, but he can fly. The Spearow are attacking it. Well, get good. Please, save Nebby. Okay, here we go. We're saving Nebby. All right. Bye. Just gonna walk all the way down Mahalo Trail real quick. All right, fine. Hey, you look familiar. Have we met before? All right. Here he come! But what is it actually? Oh, it's a Delcaddy, obviously. A flying Delcaddy. A cat in bird's clothing. Let's get in there. Aha! Shadow Ball, you idiot! Parish Song, that's dangerous! Yeah, Bob, for uh, for a lot of his playthroughs of Pokemon games, will uh, set the language to be something different entirely. 
uh, which is how I actually played Ultra Sun the first time. I put it into Japanese, so I didn't really pay attention to the plot or anything. I didn't need to know it either, because it was effectively the same as, uh, as the original game. And, uh, really the only thing I guess I missed out on was the names of those two new characters that show up for, uh... Like, from the Ultra Universe or whatever. Also, nice touch to add this cutscene where your character actually shows facial emotion. And also... Look at that ugly looking legendary. Oh. I really do not like the Tapu designs. Or the Ultra Beasts. Like, they're kind of neat as, uh, as mystical, I guess, beings for Hawaii, but as Pokemon, they just don't look appealing. Are you the Kahuna? What do you mean? Uh, like, if the Tapus are based off of uh, real-life folklore, in that case, sure, they, they have some merit to their designs. But they still look ugly. And Ultra Beasts, again, they may be based on certain things, but it doesn't look pleasing to the eye. Like, Buzzwall B in Thick AF? It is, is a giant buff mosquito pulsing with blood. And he's got four legs. And then there's Zerkatry. And then there's Blacephalon. And then there's Kartana. Kartana's neat because it's origami. But none of those have a face. Oh, and then there's... Um, trying to remember the name of it right now. It's the jellyfish. The rock poison type. It's, it's literally just Lily. Those aren't legs, those are stand-in arms. Nihilego, there you go. And that's another thing. What's with the names of the Ultra Beasts? Some of them are so unpronounceable. Here's a special gift. It's a Pokedex, and now Rotom will never shut the hell up. Actually, wait, it's gonna be a little bit until Rotom jumps in, right? Okay, bye. Glimmer. Here. You can have it. I don't want it. Dad rescued me. I was falling to my death, and he kind of swooped in, zapped me a few times, and I'm still dead, but this is just all a hallucination. In the few seconds it takes before I actually splat onto the ground. Here's a Pokedex. Enjoy never having a moment of peace and quiet ever again. Look who I've got with me! It's a Hoot Hoot! Look! That's him! That's right. It's a cat versus a bird. I think we know how this goes. <gasps> Beans! You did remember a very crucial part of this gen. Ding, ding, dang, dong. I'm the champions. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon have much in common with the Mario and Luigi games, because the most important parts of those games? Beans. Also, any given coffee simulator. Beans. Wave! 
No relation to the Sonic character of a similar name. Bob knows what I'm talking about. You know, a wild Pokemon will jump out of the tall grass. Nope, had no idea about that. Totally didn't experience that earlier. What is it? It's a Grubbin. Wait, that's totally normal. It's a Rock Gruff. Wait, that's also totally normal. These are also totally normal. I guess you can't randomize the uh, the catching tutorial in this. Chomp. Use a netball! Use a netball! He doesn't have a netball, does he? Alright, Kukui, you've lost all my respect. 50 Pokeballs? Never mind, you gained it back. I can't believe it! He caught it! I'm so proud of him. Imagine not walking around with netballs. Exactly. See, why do people like Kukui? Actually, do people like Kukui? I think he's pretty entertaining. What is our first possible catch? A Shuppet! I like Shuppet. Go, Hootlet! Mess him up! Ah, yes, Ninja Shuppet. Pocket Ball. Ding. And now we will look over to the icons. Look, there he is! It's Shuppet! Registered. Um. Ba -ba oh, I'm in the Johto Pokemon here on the icons. Where would Shuppet be? Still Gen 4 now. Okay, now we're Gen 3. There he is. And just let me... There he is. I guess I'm just, I'll, I'll just leave him up there for a, a second. How about that? I don't understand that animation. Why retaliate a ninja art now? Well, you, dis you brought dishonor upon the clan, I guess. Uh, how about... He. he has been added to your party. Thank God. Alright. What does he get? Oh, same nature as, uh, as Hoot Hoot. Iron Head, Retaliate, and Bone Club. Those are pretty good moves. Is anyone else bothered by, uh, Shuppet being super tiny on the little overlay there? And not even in the Pokeball. I think he's kind of cute down there, but... If any one person has a problem with it... We can change it. Mess him up, I don't care much for a level 2 Meryl. He's doing his best. True. Uh, 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 there we go. Hey. Delicious. From Laveridge Town. What else we got? Hey, Lubize. That's pretty strong for this area. And I like bug types. But it is level 2, so it's probably not going to be gaining a whole lot of levels. Get out of here. 